This presentation looks at the paper around healthcare associated infections. It provides an overview of those and looks at some of the prevention strategies. I'm reporting on behalf of a team from the National Defence University of Malaysia, Swansea University um, and the University of Maserata in Italy and I'm Judy McKim. I'd like to acknowledge the background picture um, which is a Creative Commons slide uh, which illustrates um, some Escheria coli grown in culture. Healthcare associated infections um, are those which occur while patients are receiving healthcare in a range of settings, not just hospitals. Um, these infections appear 48 hours or more after hospital admission or within 30 days after having received healthcare, such as an operation or other intervention. In this overview, um, I'll discuss a selection of infections and some of the prevention strategies. They are a significant cause of morbidity and mortality. Healthcare associated infections are one of the top five causes of death in the US and they are a global uh, issue really to deal with. Very common in both high and low resource settings, more common in low resource settings. And they cost all health systems vast amounts of money but also the cost to individuals can be very high, not just in, in financial terms, but primarily in terms of their health and, well, and well-being. The knowledge about healthcare associated infections has been around for a long time, since the mid 19th century. And Semmelweis, who was a Hungarian obstetrician, was, is widely credited for being the first person to identify that health providers themselves could spread disease. His work uh, looking at maternal mortality uh, identified that the women treated by the obstetricians and medical students were actually uh, high, more likely to die and had a higher mor mortality than those treated by midwives and he wanted to, to find why this was. What he found was that this was due to the spread of germs by the doctors and students which called puerperal sepsis. So he was the first person really to introduce an intervention and he introduced chlorine hand washing as an intervention to help prevent the spread of disease and it actually did, did, did work. So the prevalence of healthcare associated infections varies around the world, ranging from about 4% to 10% um, of, of patients treated. The rates are higher in low resource settings um, and that's due to a combination of factors. But the causative microorganisms are found in all sorts of areas on the health provider's hands, in their nasal cavities, on their clothing, on floors and other surfaces, particularly on door handles and taps, and also in implants and prostheses. So some patients are more prone to healthcare associated infections than others. Those undergoing surgery, um, patients with compromised immune responses, um, perhaps older, older people, children, those having implants or prostheses are the most susceptible. And the four that we discuss in the paper are the central line associated bloodstream infections, surgical site infections, catheter associated urinary tract infections and ventilator associated pneumonia. Um, Around the world, there are about 12 to 17 microorganisms which cause around 80 to 87% of healthcare associated infections. And these are listed below. They're common microorganisms, some found on the skin, but also, uh, you know, um, E. coli, uh, Staphylococcus, etc. So these organisms um, are very prevalent, very common, but actually a lot of them are starting to become resistant to antimicrobials, which again is one of the issues around having a strategy for clear prevention and control. So the prevention strategies used really combine the older techniques such as the hand washing um, and, and the use of antimicrobials with new treatment modalities. But still, the, w, uh, the WHO advocates that effective hand hygiene is the single most effective practice to prevent and control healthcare associated infections through um, soap and water or through alcohol rubs. So other methods include barrier methods uh, in certain settings, gloves, aprons, masks, face shields, etc. Uh, the use of drugs uh, and vaccines. So for health workers, having the flu vaccine each year is really important to help prevent prevent the spread of flu and then rigorous cleaning of floors using uh, specific disinfectants um, and also other modalities such as hydrogen peroxide vapour and ultraviolet light. 
and infection control training for health providers around clear guidelines is absolutely vital part of the strategy and the training has been shown to really improve particular hand hygiene. So, in summary, the healthcare associated infections have been known about since the mid-19th century, but they're still one of the highest causes of death in most countries, and they're very needless and they're often preventable. So hand hygiene and cleaning of surfaces is a core plank of the prevention and control strategy. But also, maintaining a vigilance around identifying the causes of healthcare associated infections, so you can identify those that are antibiotic resistant and use the most appropriate antibiotics. If anybody wants further information, uh, they can contact the lead author, which is uh, Professor Hack, and here is his email. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you enjoy reading the paper.